So, staying in the turtle team like last week's video, I'm back, I'm Mike, there's no robot this time. And in this week's video, I am showing you guys in a tutorial how to use overlays. Anyway, last Ronin will be the artwork using several techniques and not just slapping an overlay above everything else. Put it to scream mode and call it a day. Oh yeah, damn. I am showing you guys in this week's video how to use overlays in so much more dynamic ways. This is not a tutorial on how to use overlays. If you want to see that, there's a card in the middle of this video. Anyway, welcome to my channel, I'm Double Art Angel, and let's hop right into this tutorial. Let's hop over the fact that this is the last Ronin, so the turtle Michelangelo, he has lost all three of his brothers, but I'll get back to the story in the time lapse after this tutorial. What we are used to is we have an overlay that we like, I have this fog overlay, that we are adding it above everything else, drag it out a little, take the selection tool, copy this, and then we add it into screen mode. And after that, we mask away part that we do not want so that it's blended in together right this is how we overlay wrong this is one way the easiest way let me show you guys how i overlay in a foreground first off okay so we take that same overlay instead of adding it above everything else we check out that we have the selection of foreground but not the subjects and now we are adding it on top selection layer again and copying it by holding alt, the alt key several times and of course we are going to mask away instead of screen mode we are putting this in a group this group we are going to blend if so that we can see our shadows and now we can put it to the screen mode next up select the overlays that you are using and have masked out and make them a smart object when you have it as a smart object you can free transform it and warp it custom mesh so that i can move this overlay as i want myself so that it stays in the foreground but also moves towards the back Background, underneath the horizon that we have over here okay so this is much more subtle now instead of let me show you guys here we are without anything this is how most of you would use an overlay and this is the second now i haven't masked anything of this i only used blend if set it on the right place of the layer group all right now the next overlay will come after i have added light sources protagonist over here is going to be attacked really soon by adding these shadows as arrows in a sense how i did this a grid system by dragging lines from the main light source that is the moon in this picture anyway make sure that when you use these overlays you don't have too much stuff going on yet so the only adjustment layers that i have in this picture it's levels layers and curves layers next up the haze will be behind the foreground we have the foreground part but we only need need the haze uh, on the horizon part above here. This picture already has haze in it as itself, but this is just for the tutorial to show and let's see how it looks. Uh, the type of haze that I am going to use, I can show the overlay. So overlay looks like this. I decided that there will be some kind of red light source on this side. This haze layer we can just rawly make big enough at it above so that it eliminates all we see in the background but not in the foreground. This one we can put to screen mode right away. Then in blend if I'm going to take down from the blacks a little and we are making the opacity very very subtle. Something like 60 50. This one needs to be masked so let's add the mask and 
take the mask away and then with the help of a gradient tool I'm going to bring back the mask from from the foreground in the background here's before and here is after that was basically doing it with the screen mode and blend if and just having it in a part of that picture instead of just adding it above everything next version of overlay will be after i've added light sources and shadow so highlights rim lights trying to go through everything so but we have some rules how to implement these overlays before i am going to do that i need to add adjustment layers to this almost finish this one before camera roll all right so the next thing we are doing we are making it ourselves we are using just a simple circle or ellipse tool the color that we want and holding alt key we are selecting a color and then we are making sure that it will that it has vibrance in it so above the fog overlay that we just added i'm gonna move this circle so that we get it as a illuminating source of light when i'm satisfied with the circle we are going to make this a smart object and use the warping tool free transform and warp and i'm gonna adjust it so that the light source hits just outside of this temple since we have made highlights or rim lights or hair lights or edge lights you can call it whatever you want on all of these dudes all the way over here we also need that highlight to be at least almost over there so now we have this thing over here and i'm gonna make it soft light and then add on the filter blur gaussian blur and take it up a lot to almost 100 or so so that we get this and after that i am using blend if to bring back darker parts in this area but also taking away from the white now this is also overlay with shape tool you can also like add a gradient if you want to instead of a color okay so now i've made a simple highlighting in these two lanterns and the next overlay that we are using will be added twice the reason being we are adding it before camera raw but also after before we are adding it as a light source you can have any type of light source overlay actually but i'm using this kind of diffused orange type of light we set this to screen and add it inside here where you think that the fire from the light source or bulb if it's a lamp would be is up to you let's copy this layer by holding ctrl and pressing j and then i am going to move this light source over with the arrow key to the second place mask this but before that we added in a group this group we are blending if and we are blending it from the underlying layers but not too much and from the current layer we are taking away from the black don't touch the white in this one and now we can add the mask and just mask away around the light source like so now we have two more light sources in the picture that weren't there and we use overlays to make them so the next thing with overlays will be stars these we are adding also twice and we are making sure that we have selected the layer before the sky layer instead of just setting it on there change the screen mode we are always warping these so we get a different look on the overlays i'm keeping this one in normal mode so you guys see how i am warping this i'm warping it so that we're getting this effect that the milky way is like coming from the roof over here so i basically i'm making an arrow by having the the shadows like this and then the milky way like that now i am going to screen this and make sure that the stars are behind clouds stars are never in front of clouds to make sure of this we are just taking away the stars from underlaying from the white bring it back so that we have the stars still in the picture but 
right when we see that they are in the front of a cloud we stop right there make sure that we don't have any stars on the cloud i keep saying cloud you know i mean clouds let's make all the layers yellow that we are gonna use after these all right so we come to the end of this tutorial as well now the last of overlays that i am going to show are gonna be after camera roll so what we are doing now is bringing back the effects that we want to pop first of we are adding a layer over here by pressing ctrl alt and shift and e we get this into one picture instead of all these layers i'm gonna copy this one i always do if there's something in the camera raw that we don't like then we can just take the old version and fix it let's hop into camera raw okay so now we have the camera raw it, it looks good but it washes out pretty much everything right and we don't want that what we're going to do next is bring back well first of all we have the fog overlay and that one is gonna be above everything we are going to mask away from this foreground part and then i have these lanterns over here we are taking all these layers that we have over here and we are going to copy those and add above everything else except for the last overlay this one is going to be on the top a little tweak in the masking then we have the star layer we don't actually need it so let's delete this one when you want stars to look better instead of trying to tweak with exposures etc or even try to hand paint you know white dots here and there where the stars are you use the exact same overlay that you just had in the picture you drag it above everything else and then you go to blending options and in blending options you take away the black totally that's how you get the stars to shine bright, shine bright like a diamond. we have two more overlays that we need to add or actually three this sword to look sharp as hell now i am going to add lens flare i have these lens flares that are meant to be used like over the whole picture so thought of using this one make sure it's above everything else add it to screen like so now we have that there and then i'm going to copy this and make it bigger what i'm now looking for are these so-called bucket oh what are you talking about man this is all good and gravy, right? Now match this composition in the same colors. I'm not just adding this overlay as it is because it has this orange kind of bokeh. So we are adding a hue and saturation layer. We can also colorize it, of course, if we want to. And then we get the effect on everything. Also on this lens flare down here. Mask away parts that we don't want. So I decided that this big guy will be also in focus so he will have a lens flare as well i have these optical flares once again you make sure we are above everything and now i'm gonna use this eye lens flare basically because it's pretty simple and we are gonna add a screen copy this and move it over here i'm going to colorize this red but before we do that we're adding this into a group and ask what we don't want so these ugly edges and again hue and saturation layer this time we are colorizing it and making them red like that now we have him also in focus other dudes i think are good as is we have one more overlay and that's dust overlay we are taking these dust particles make this quite small like so and then we're just going to copy this i'm adding these all in a group and we are making this also screen and then we are masking and inverting the mask by pressing ctrl and i and then bring back the mask when we inverted the mask instead of just using the round brush and bringing it back we are using cloud brushes this is how you use overlays in other ways also than just smacking in top of the artwork using screen modes right so i catch you in the outro we were always so different so much alike i miss my brothers so much need to end this on my terms for my family or all 
Right. So the last Ronin, it's quite the tragic story because it tells about Mikey in a mini series of five comics, how he lost all his brothers one by one in different kind of ways. Leonardo, Donatello and Raphael aren't anymore. And I wanted to show that in this picture by adding the headbands on his arm. For lore accuracy, I did some changes. He actually has a black band on his head this time around. Also, this type of samurai kind of armor. And they have made it really gruesome by killing off both his father and his best friend. And he has no idea that this is happening because he's outside doing his own journey, becoming a ronin. When he returns, he finds out that he's alone. Anyway, I decided in this artwork to make foot soldiers, but not with the foot clan marking because they did a pact in this story where they were supposed to be in peace with Shredder's daughter and something. I won't go that into detail in that in the actual story but they of course betray him and so this fight scene is based on the story but totally from my mind. I decided that I want to make a parallax kind of picture so that's like a landscape picture but a very very wide one and also first I thought I want to make a rainy night scene but then I decided that fog is actually working in the same way as rain as overlay night starry sky would fit better anyway I made these assets also in nomad sculpt 3d assets but they needed texturing so i made sure to do that also off camera i have built together most of these characters as well thank you for watching i hope you guys learned from this tutorial also something and i catch you in the outro So here is the end result. That was quite a spectacle of what it became. And like I said in the voiceover, the assets that I have used for this particular artwork, I made myself in Nomad Sculpt. And I may, when I get my new camera, start filming some of the process when I'm sculpting in Nomad Sculpt. Show you guys how I make those assets. I can't promise you guys that I am doing these weekly because my reach is so bad that I just don't have the motivation to press out these videos as often as I did before. But I still will keep doing these. Anyway, let's keep to the Samurai Ninja theme. That's right, next week we are keeping the live action series going. It will be Samurai Jack. Anyway, I'm Double Light Angel again. Thank you for watching and if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe right over here. And if you want to know how to use overlays in a basic fashion, you can check out this video or you can check this other video. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I sure am gonna have one because I'm gonna go watch Doom too. Anyway, I catch you in the next one.